Okay, guys, so let's start. Um, uh, as you can see, my name is Marcela Juliana da Silva. I'm a Brazilian PhD student. So I do my PhD at the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. So I have a little experience with the use of crowdfunding. That's why I'm here today talking to you. Are you all hearing me? Can you hear me okay? Good, okay. So, um, so let's see, let's start. So I have uh, my first slide for you is this PAG Comics. I'm sure if you are a PAG student, you have heard of the PAG Comics already. So, I mean, the first question is mine. Uh, what the future holds to PAG students? That's a good question, right? So we have the post hoc and po versus post hoc fallacy. So the post hoc fallacy says that it's incorrect to assume that A is the cause of B just because A precedes B. And the post hoc fallacy says something similar, that it's incorrect, incorrectly to assume that you will have a job just because you have a PhD. So is that a PhD enough? So this is a fair question, right? Um, so I have uh, some data from important journals that I would like to show to you. They are not like very good news, but I think it's important for us to think about this a little bit. So uh, Nature News have uh, reported in 2011 uh, uh, an article that they call the PhD factory. So they ask, the world is producing more PhDs than ever before. Is it time to stop? So they have some data over here. So this is the patterns of PAG production around some countries. So here in this figure, you have four countries, China, United Kingdom, Japan, and Germany. So the graph shows uh, the number of PAGs awarded from the beginning of the 90s into 2008. So here you can see that only Germany keep it stable across the years and all the other countries were, were giving more PAGs each year. Um, and uh, here they have some data to the U.S. So uh, we have three graphs here. So the number of PhDs awarded the same thing from the beginning of the 90s to 2007. So we have in different colors, different eras of PhDs, but it doesn't matter. So we can see it was increasing uh, uh, along the years. The time to complete the PhDs, the PhDs was kind of stable but the employment of doctorates was decreasing. So by the time the number of PhDs were increasing each year, the employment of doctorates were decreasing. So that's, that's a big concern, right? Um, and to finish with this data, I have a uh, scale of dissatisfaction of um, PhDs workers after they have their PhDs, mostly academic. So we have, we have here, uh, we can see that the higher um, scales of business satisfactions are with benefits, opportunities to advance, and salary. So uh, I'm going to talk about something good in a minute. I'm just going, I'm just going to show to you uh, a little bit more about this kind of research. So I have here um, a very recent work published on PLOS One in the end of two, 2013. And they have concluded something very um, tricky and very important. I mean, they say that PhD students uh, are good to prospect um, contemporaneous changes in the market waves of employment. Like, we can understand uh, what the vacancies are right now. I mean, we know what uh, kind of jobs uh, are in the market right now. But by the time we finish our PhDs, that it looks like it takes like four or six years in, uh, depending on the country, uh, we, uh, the market will change. So they say that uh, the PhD students do not forecast for the changes that will arise by the time they completed their degrees and enter the labor market. And you know, in six years, uh, the world is completely different and then our expertise may be um, out of the market. So this is something very important that we should think about, right? Uh, with this data, then, I come back to the first question that Nature asks. asks is it time stopping producing PhDs? Uh, what do you think? I mean, my answer to that is, of course not. Uh, that's not only because I am a PhD student, 
but I, I really think that scientific training brings important skills to people. So, you know, we, we are awarded with uh, important skills to make a better person, like critical thinking. Uh, we know how to interpret data using the scientific method, and that's very good because it brings skepticism. And I think the world needs uh, more skepticism, and, and that's very important. And we, we deal okay with uncertainty. So these are skills very important to scientists and to people. And I think they are not only important to people, but they are very important to make a better world. So uh, in my opinion, it's not time stopping producing PhD. Uh, but it, it is time for us to think a little bit, to use our skills a little bit better, you know? So, um, we have to think a little bit uh, outside the box, you know? So why not to be an entrepreneur? So this is a question, uh, this is a very uh, important question, I think, that we should be thinking of. So uh, my experience in the, in the entrepreneurship world is with the use of crowdfunding, and that's why I'm here talking to you today. So um, in academia, we have, uh, I, I think, two major problems. That is uh, how we're going to fund our researchers, our research, and, uh, and employment after PhD. There is something very important as well, of course. But I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, how we could fund, you know, science in an alternative way. So I have here, I mean, the last comic for you. And this is very, I mean, this is sad, but it's funny. You, you know, when before grad school, we are so naive. We are like, oh, I'm going to research whatever I want, you know. And then you get to grad school, and then you, you realize that you have to do what, whatever your uh, committee was giving you money to, money to do, whatever your professor wants you to do. So you end up, I mean, never doing the science that you would really like to do. So is that an alternative way for us to do like innovative science, something that is like new and then you, we can't fund through the agencies and then something that is risky and then we want to try? Is that another way to do that? And another very important question is, that, is this one. Can we take advantage of new digital, virtual and social technologies to make a better science? You know, this thing we are doing today just answer the questions. Of course we can. I mean, I'm talking from Rio de Janeiro in Brazil and you are all hearing me around Europe and around, around the world and that's so nice, you know. We are using the internet to make a better communication and that's very important. So, of course, the answer to this question is yes. So, uh, I have here um, uh, an option for you that is the use of crowdfunding. So I have a, a, a formal statement here that the crowdfunding is the collection of finance to sustain an initiative from a large pool of backers, the crowd, usually made online by means of a web platform. So what is, what is this crowdfunding about that even Nature is talking about this? So last year Nature as well has, uh, has uh, bring some uh, reports about crowdfunding. So in 2013, so it's a very, very hot topic right now. And, you know, uh, I'm going to tell you a little story, and, and then I can tell you that all you need is a good story to make a, a good crowdfunding and to make a successful crowdfunding. So I'm going to tell you uh, the Golden Motor story in South America. So um, the, the person who is going to talk to you is me, but it's me like a cartoon. So we have a video now, and uh, I hope all you can see it. I'm going to upload it from, from YouTube, and let's see what you think. I hope you enjoy it. Hi there, my name is Marcela and I'm a PhD student at the Biophysics Institute at the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. I'm going to present to you my PhD project, that is the genome sequencing of the golden muscle. Well, you all know what a muscle is. Usually they are very delicious to eat. But this one I work with, that is about one centimeter in size, we cannot eat, and it's causing lots of troubles. It came from China in ballast water, the water used to balance ships when they are empty. 
it arrived in Argentina in 1991 and rapidly spread through South American continental waters, reaching the wetlands of Pantanal, very close to the Amazon River basin. This research is part of a bigger project to avoid golden mussel reaching Amazonian waters. You know, these mussels took the saying grow and reproduce too seriously. They grow side by side, one under the other, they grow, grow, grow. In one year, their densities go from 15 mussels per meter square to 150,000 mussels per meter square. Like this, they clog pipelines of power plants attached to chips, holes, trees, and even to other native bivalves. They are unable to open their valves to breathe and reproduce and end up dying. But that's not the worst part. Without natural predators, they are well adapted to the tropical climate and now they only do three things, eat, sleep, and mate, not necessarily in that order. They mate much more than they sleep and they eat even more. They eat so much, filtering the water, that make the algae disappear. Fish eat mussels too, but they eat so much that they end up dying of indigestion. Scientists call it an ecosystem engineer, because it changes the invaded environment, decreasing biodiversity. Actually, we do not know enough about this muscle. We know it can attach to any surface through the byssus, produced by the muscle's foot gland. But how this foot gland can do that? This is the kind of question we are eager to answer. We want to study DNA and genes to be able to understand the muscle better. But that costs a lot of money, and that's why we need your help. Our lab has already sequenced its transcriptome, and now we want to do its entire genome. And how it would benefit you? Besides gaining our infinite love and the relief of saving Amazon from this plague, we are going to name after you the genes and proteins described on this research. For instance, my name is Marcelo Liano. If I found out an amazing protein, it would be all the attempts to, to embed the video in the presentation, sorry. Okay. So um, I'm working bioinformatics now, so you know that the golden mussel is, a, is an invasive species in South America and it's reaching Amazonian waters and you know nobody wants that because it's an ecosystem engineer. So that's a story with a few, right? So, um, so why we did it? Why we did this crowdfunding campaign, you know? So the thing is, well, of course we needed the money, yes. But you know, here in our lab, we are bloggers, we like science, and we, we are in love with science communication. So we thought, we had a scientific and ecological problem with appeal, you know. So this is something very important when you are doing a crowdfunding, I think you have to stop and think about your project and digest it in a way that everybody's going to understand it. So that's very important in a crowdfunding project. So um, let's do this. So uh, guess what? Guess what happens when you have a good story translated to the public? You get, I mean, you, you, you get a show. It, it was so fantastic that we, uh, our email boxes were full of people asking about the project and people w wanted to know and the cool scientists, they were helping Amazon, you know. So you get volunteers, you get interns, you get, you get press and media and and you know, when you show your project in an in easier way, you get all the uh, companies or the government trying to sponsor your research, more than the crowdfunding that you already gained. So, you know, so that's very important. I mean, here in uh, the pictures are only pictures of the press that went uh, off for the project, this, just some of them. And, you know, uh, I got emails from people trying to share their computer memory for, for me to do assemblies and annotation on the genome. That was, I mean, so amazing. And then lots of uh, undergrad students coming to work in the project at the university. That was, you know, amazing. Very amazing, really. And, yeah, here is me, like, saying, yeah, the project was funded, you know. So now what happens when you have a good story, you can communicate science behind the project to the crowd, you find the right website and follow the rules, you get your project funded. So um, and I have 
this is slide over here, so then we can talk a little bit about the, uh, um, about the crowdfunding uh, way of doing things. So you have major steps that you should be uh, you should care about when you are launching a crowdfunding. So you have to choose the the right website for you. So you know there are uh, crowdfunding websites for art, and there are specific crowdfunding websites for science. We have chosen Catarse because we thought at the first that our demand was very local. So we chose a Brazilian website, and everybody at Catarse were very excited because they would going to have their first scientific project in the website. And I think that was a good choice because you, the project was um, very famous in Brazil and we could reach the, the amount we were asking for. And then, you know, another important thing that we learned with this project is that you have to set a realistic target and time limit. So in Catarse and in the most uh, crowdfunding project, uh, crowdfunding website, you have to get all the amount that you are asking for because they assume that if you have less money than you ask, you are not able to uh, produce the project and conclude the project. So they don't give you partial money. They only do the whole thing or more. So set a realistic target. I mean, check other projects, uh, similar projects that are in other websites. So this is very uh, always a good idea. And you know, you have always a time limit, something like 60 days or 30, day, 30 days. So you have to forget about launching a crowdfunding on, on holidays, you know, because nobody's going to be on the internet. So forget about Christmas and for Brazilians, forget about Carnival because nobody's going to be on the internet on Carnival. And then you have all, um, also to think about the payment day of people, right? You cannot launch it in the end of the month that everybody's broken, you know. So you have to think about that. And then we have uh, the video campaign. So, you know, everybody's on YouTube these days, and uh, nobody's, like, reading long text. So people are watching videos, and this is the heart of our project. So we spent some uh, money with friends that are illustrators and designers, so that's why it, was, it wasn't so expensive. So you have to have contacts as well. But they have done a very amazing job uh, with the video, and, you know, uh, the narrative of the video I thought to, uh, together with my, my advisors. And it was mainly his idea that is like fantastic, uh, the way how we could translate the science behind the project to the public. So, you know, projects with videos outperform those without by 125%, so it's a lot. So I think here in the video campaign, you have to spend some time and you have to do it, uh, a very nice video. Then you have to offer awards, right? So we, we offered the, the name of the people in the genes and proteins described it. So everybody was crazy about it. People were like, oh, I want my name in a gene. You know, it's going to be in a database online. It's so cool. Oh, I want to be at least a little bit scientist, you know. So that was a very creative and very nice award. So we did it and, it, and uh, it, it's going, the project's going right now. And another thing that we learned is that you have to connect with friends and family first. Like, before you're launching your, your crowdfunding, you have to start, like, teaching everybody, oh, I'm going to launch a crowdfunding, I'm going to launch a crowdfunding, please, please, help me, help me, help me. Because they, you know, they get used to, and by the time your project is on air, and it's like the timing is running out, people are going to donate it much more easier than they would if they needed to get all the information still, you know. So we start talking about your crowdfunding project before you do your crowdfunding. And another important thing is post regular campaign updates. So you are going to spend some time on the internet with that, but it's like go to your Facebook, share your story, share your project. And then, you know, it's not only important for you that you will get the funds, but it's important that you are showing science to people, science to people that are not scientists. And that's education, you know, and that's very nice. So um, here in this, uh, this is why they have the main steps towards a successful crowdfunding that I've just talked to you about. So then you can have this presentation, then you can go easier, e easier in, uh, through this slide to, to see the main steps. So I'm going to skip it because I talked about this already. Um, uh, here is just to show you a little bit about the, the Qatar website. So here you have the website address. 
and then this is the logo, Qatar's website. And then you have here in Portuguese, genome, uh, Golden Muscles Genome Project, then you have the video. And after, uh, below the video, you have like a brief explanation of the project. So I, we have an English version in this website as well for foreigner friends to see. And here in the uh, right side of the slide, we can see, you know, we had like around, we, ha we were funded around $20,000. It is in, in reais, it is 4,736 reais, so it's about $20,000. We had like um, 361 uh, fund funders, so we love them. This is our crowd and they are so amazing because they helped us. And you know, uh, in here they show um, um, it is the um, uh, days left the project, so it's zero because the project is ended already. But we reached uh, the four thousand uh, reais we are asking for, so everything was okay. So this is just to have to give you a little idea how the website works. Here, uh, when the project was on air, they had a, a button, so you could click here and then you can easily donate, uh, give your credit cards or um, information, then you can donate. It's very easy to do that. Um, and uh, as this, the, the success was so huge uh, with the project and our lab is so cool and I mean, it's so uh, involved with showing science uh, showing science in a cool way to people that uh, it's going to be on there in May an exclusively um, channel for scientific projects in Qatar. It will be called Genesis. So stay tuned. You can go to Qatar and then in, in early May it's going, to be, it's going to be online and you can do your crowdfunding there if you like. And uh, just to finish uh, and then we can discuss a little bit about the project. But I have some lessons learned with this. I mean, it was an amazing experience. You know, one of the uh, lessons is that it's easier than to ask a funding agency, you know. Uh, even if you have to do a video, you have to go to the website, you have to share on Facebook, it, it, it's kind of easier than to ask a funding agency. It's easier to justify, you know, how you're going to use the money and uh, what you were doing in, in your project, but it's not less important. So, you know, the crowd is your funding agency. So you have to be very um, careful with the crowd. So, you know, how, uh, as this project is a four years project, everybody knew it was a PhD project and the award is going to be, on, is going to come only at the end of the project. They are the name in the genes and proteins. Uh, I, I, I am posting like, um, updates all the time in my personal blog. So I have a blog, unfortunately it's in Portuguese. But, you know, people can go there and can see how the project is going. And I'm, I'm keeping an online protocol as well. So the online protocol is in English. If you want to follow a little bit about the genome, uh, the Golden Muscle Genome Project, it's over there, over there. And it's very amazing how the crowd goes there all the time. They want to see news. They want to see how the project is going, you know. And, uh, and that's very nice. I mean, that's a, a, a touch we can keep with the founders that is very important. And there is another thing, guys, that is very important if you think about uh, the future. Broadcast yourself or die, you know. So this is for everything. You don't have to do a crowdfunding, but you have to think about new ideas to work, in, you know, to do new things. You have to use the internet to communicate, you know, to show science and then to um, make the world a better, a better place for us and for everybody and to get a nice job. So. You know, it's not time to be, um, uh, it's time to be innovative, you know, to do innovation. And, you know, the biggest lesson is this one. When you explain science right, people will not only understand and like it, and they will donate, you know, and that's so amazing. I mean, we, we're talking about money, you know, so people were like learning about science and they were, they were donating and that was fantastic. So here's just to show you a little bit about us. So how are things now? I mean, the work is nonstop. So basically I am becoming a bioinformatician or I am a bioinformatician. I like to think that, you know, I'm assembling genes, genomes, and annotating everything. 
So these are my uh, these are my two advisors. Yeah, they have two. <laughs> so this one is Francisco, and this one is Mauro. And then uh, the main idea was uh, between Mauro and myself, and then Francisco came along. And this is our lab. And to finish, I would like to give you some more information. So in this presentation, you have lots of links that you can click on, and then you can contact me. This is my email. You can you can write to me anytime. And then I mean there 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 are news about the project, and then we have the Qatar website over here that you can access and look for yourself. You have my CV if you like, my profile at ResearchGate, and then my blog that is important to you. Uh, unfortunately, but you can uh, show it to your Portuguese friends if you have them. And uh, I would like to invite you to Brazil. So our lab works with environmental biotechnology. If you are interested in doing something like that, uh, mainly in Napozoc, you are very welcome to come. So thanks a lot, guys, for your time. I hope you have enjoyed it. And then let's open for questions. Thank you. Oh, can you, uh, there is a way to provide this presentation because if we send, if we send by email, people can like copy the URLs and then they can get you the, to their web pages. I can send to you later, Cindy, if you like. Of course, do, of course, do that. I'll be so. Uh, tell me a little bit more. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Your question, half, please. In Europe. I know that is the Kickstarter in the US. That's a good question. Um, I'm pretty sure if you look on, the, on on Google, if you Google it, you can find it. But Kickstarter is the biggest crowdfunding website, I think. And yeah, it's very good if, if you look for yeah, see, I mean, if you look for a, a crowdfunding website in Europe, I think it's better because of the money transactions. So, um, usually they are very international, but um, if you are like in Europe, maybe it's easier to do, you know, this transfer uh, of money or something. Can you? Oh, see, in the UK. That's nice. Can you tell us a little bit more about your conference? I mean, in short words. Even if, you know, uh, I, I really think this story matters a lot. You know, you ha you, we had this uh, protect the Amazon question. And people were very interested on this, you know. I mean, and as you can see, we haven't shown the details like, oh, I'm going to do a lot of bioinformatics and then I have to assemble this, assemble this and this and this, you know, because people don't know that this. But they, they, want, they want the clear message, you know, the bigger message. So that's what we gave to them.
Oh, nice. Nice, the team. Uh, I'm going to, to talk to my advisor. Maybe we can, uh, we can go there and then uh, talk, to, talk to you. I'm going to... Is there a website, Cindy, for that? Oh, good. Nice. Of, of course. Thanks. Okay, nice. I have a conference in Puerto Rico at the beginning of June. So hope, hopefully yours is going to be at the end of June. So we can make it. Of course, yes, of course. So here is the video on YouTube. Um, Oh, nice. Like it, you enjoy it. So do you have some experience in the, in the crowdfunding area, Cindy, or only like innovation and showing science? Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so it's in anthropology, is it? Okay, nice. Okay. Guys, I mean, seriously, if you have any questions, you can email me, you know, because when you do a crowdfunding, you will learn a lot about how doing it. So it's really, really very important avoiding holidays and stuff. If you are thinking about this and if you want to discuss a good story or stuff like that, you can always email me. And I think it's nice. I think it's a good idea. You know, uh, you, you always have to think about the reward. I mean, some websites they don't ask for Howard, but it's always um, if you don't think if you don't think in a way as a Howard, you can think about uh, feedback. See, this is a good reason, and that's something that is ha has to be very clear in the crowdfunding website, right? Like saying, you know, I'm asking you to help me because I want to keep it free for participants because this is about innovation. This is about the future. So it shouldn't be paid, you know, because so, so people can access. 
So say that very clear in your crowdfunding, and I think you have a, a, a good shot. I mean, you can, you know, do it. And you, you have to always think about uh, the awards. It can be the entrance in the conference, but if it's going to be free, it can be something else, like, I don't know, you know, something in the conference. Thank you, Sanya. I don't know if your name is like this, but thank you a lot. Thank you a lot. Thanks, Les. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I'm, I'm planning on blog uh, in English, you know, but I'm, sometimes I'm a bit lazy, so I'm only blogging in Portuguese, but, you know. <laughs> Please? <laughs> blogging in English? Is that it? <laughs> Yeah, but translators, you know, they are machines, like, <laughs> we can always uh, try that, but, you know, if you say if I, if I just blog in English, then, I mean, in Portuguese and in English, I can do both, I can try to do both. You know, PhD is working out, but, you know, we have to broadcast ourselves. <laughs> so, okay, Cindy, we'll be in touch through email. Okay. Of course, okay, good. Thank you, Hope. Thank you, everyone.